Come along while we explore some of the most remote islands on Earth and visit a country where there are more sheep than people. The Faroe Islands are a group of 18 picturesque islands located in the North Atlantic Ocean. And while they are situated between Scotland, Norway and Iceland, these islands are actually an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark. We've been looking forward to coming here for such a long time as the photos we've seen online are absolutely incredible. We have our hiking boots on and are ready to explore everything the Faroe Islands have to offer. So we've just got into Faroe Island Airport and picked up our hire car. We haven't even checked into the hotel yet, but we're already in our first hike. Google Maps says that it's called Slave Cliff. The Slave Cliff, but we can't pronounce the proper we'll name. We'll... The Faroese name <laughs> up here. We've actually flew over it. It was incredible. It's the biggest lake in the Faroe Islands. And it has this really cool optical illusion that makes it look like it's on the edge of a really steep cliff. This last bit is steep, but it is so beautiful already. The cliffs are so dramatic and puffed. <laughs> This is just incredible. We thought Norway was amazing and it was, but this is certainly up there. Just next to the breathtaking Cliff Lake Illusion, there is a small five metre waterfall with a backdrop of sea stacks. We recommend this short detour to go and have a look at the spectacular view when hiking back from Slave Cliff. This hike was such a special way to start our time in the Faroe Islands. It is day two on our Faroe Islands adventure. Today we're doing a little bit of village hopping. Mm. So we started in a place that I think is pronounced Kirkjabor. It is adorable. Every single building here has a grass roof. <laughs> Dates back, I think, to some of the buildings here are from the 16th century and it's one of the oldest villages in the Faroe Islands and it was sort of the religious centre as well, so it's only one of the churches. But it's just got so much history, it looks so beautiful. This is a really cool spot because you can see the ruins of the old church, Magnus, St. Magnus Church, and you can also see the new church, Olaf's Church, and it's a really cool juxtaposition with the adorable village in the background. On the way to our next town, Jornavik, we pass by Fossa Waterfall. This thing is absolutely huge. Standing at its base, you can't really even appreciate its size as you can only glimpse the upper level of the 140 metre waterfall, making it the tallest in the Faroe Islands. We're at the northernmost part of Stremoy Island, visiting our second small village, which is Jornavik village. I hope I'm pronouncing that right again, but it's another one of the oldest towns here. And they've actually found some Viking graves as well, which they think are dated back to the 10th and 11th century. But it's a beautiful town right on the coast here. It's actually a surf beach as well, which is bizarre. Um, it opens out to the oceans and you've got these beautiful sea stacks just off the cliff which legend have it they're of a giant and a witch and they're trying to pull the Fro Islands to Iceland. Our third village of the day was Saxon. This tiny town has a population of just nine people. This spot is just so picturesque with the green turf roofs against the inlet of Utalona. We have just hiked to the, we've done the Itarlona hike, and it sounds like it's a long one. <laughs> it's not really. It was a long hike. <laughs> we're on a black beach, and it's just, I feel like we're on another planet. You can walk along the water when it's low tide to get here, otherwise, it's a bit more of a treacherous hike, sort of along the, the edge of the rock face next to the water, which we sort of half did, half didn't do, but um, at low tide, it's an easy walk. Just gotta time it right. Just the green contrasting with the black sand, like everywhere we've been. Yeah. It's just Everything's amazing. incredible, everything's yeah. stunning. <laughs> sort of running out of adjectives. <laughs> Every time we're driving, I think Grace is getting sick of me going, wow, wow. Oh, yeah. It's not the view we're oh, hoping yeah. for. Been a bit of a fail, but still a challenging <laughs> hike. <laughs> still fun. <laughs> we'll post a photo of the view we're meant to see. And then this is what we see. We had heard before coming to the Faroe Islands that the unpredictable weather would likely derail at least one of our plans. 
and this prophecy unfortunately came true at Kaosoi. The hike to Kalo Lighthouse was a physical challenge, so despite the heavy fog obstructing our view, we were glad that we gave it a crack. After our hike to Kalo Lighthouse, we stopped by in the village of Mikla Delor. This village had an ethereal feel with a beautiful waterfall and the famous Seal Woman statue. The Seal Woman statue represents a very sad legend of a Seal Woman who drowns local fishermen as revenge for the slaughtering of her seal cubs. Aya is a village located on the northwest tip of Esteroy Island. While it has a new football field which is still used, this colourful town is actually more well known for its old field which is nestled right next to the Atlantic Ocean and now used as a camping ground. It is so cool to see this site as this football field looks so out of place positioned right on the edge of the coast. There is just so many sheep everywhere on the Faroe Islands and it makes a lot of sense now in Old Norse, the Viking language, Faroe mean sheep, so it's the sheep islands, and there's twice as many sheep on all these islands as there are people. So everywhere you go, sheep, 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 every hike, sheep. Funin Gur was potentially our favourite hike that we did in the Faroe Islands. This hike starts quite elevated and so it wasn't too challenging, it took us about an hour and a half return. We started the hike at a small car park to the side of Vitamar Mountain and climbed over some wooden stairs to locate the trail. The views of the fjord here against the highest peaks in the Faroe Islands are just breathtaking. We highly recommend adding this hike to your bucket list. The weather here just changes on a dime, like even all the different islands have their own microclimates, but it was super sunny here about 10 minutes ago and then it was hammering down with rain. And now it's blowing a gale, but at least the view's cleared up and we can see this incredible view of the fjord. Gorge is a lovely fishing village which bears its name from the beautiful 200 metre seafield gorge that has been used by the village as a natural harbour. This is also the only place in the Faroe where you'll see railway tracks, as these tracks are used to pull the fishing boats out of the harbour to protect them from the dangerous swells. This town is super cute and definitely worth including on any Faroe itinerary. It is our last day in the Faroe Islands and we are devastated. We are walking around Shore Harbour this morning, which is the capital of the Faroe and it's super cute. It's beautiful and this is where we're staying as well. So we've come down here for dinners, but we haven't actually given ourselves the time to just walk around and enjoy the town itself and see some of the old buildings and the historical part of the village. But we're doing that this morning. A bit reminiscent of Bergen and Copenhagen with the really colourful houses on the port. And then this afternoon we're going to explore Vagar Island. We were meant to go to Mickens, but because of weather our boat has been cancelled twice. <laughs> we're devastated. You wanted to see the puffins, which looks so cute. We're going to have to come back and see them and do Castle again, but it has just been the best five days ever. I'm probably butchering this, but right now we're in Tinganes, which is the oldest part of Shore Harbour, the capital city, and it's where all the government buildings are and where Parliament sits. The, if it's painted red, it means it's a government building, and they are just the cutest government buildings I have ever seen. I feel like we're in a Dr. Seuss book. When they meet up, it's called a thing. <laughs> After leaving Shorehaven, we decided to quickly pop into the town of Burvor to have a final look at some turf roofed houses before hopping back into the car to go visit our next village. We're at Moorfossa. We just did the famous Moorfossa waterfall, which I think has to be the most famous photograph most popular photograph we've seen of the Faroe Islands and for a good reason it's a gorgeous spot there's a free parking lot here and it was what a 10 minute extraordinarily easy walk yeah 10 minute walk from park. the town down a gravel park to get there and it's a really good vantage point of the waterfall it's not the biggest waterfall you're going to see here but it is a beautiful vantage point to look back at it and get some awesome photos we're now going to do a little walk up to a viewpoint called sunset view which apparently has a gorgeous view of Mickens just to rub it in that we didn't make it today. Oh, yeah that's Mickens over <laughs> <laughs> there, can you see it in the background? That's where we're meant to be at the moment, looking at puffins. So we've got to spend the whole day looking at the island in perfect sunlight, great weather, but the water does look the pretty water, rough. Yeah, so yeah, it looks like it would have been a rough trip over yeah. and it just means we need to come back another time. Understand why the ferry didn't <laughs> go. 
On our final day, we had a quick stop at Santa Vega and got to see the beautiful church with its distinctive red roof. I also noticed that someone had left a ball on the football pitch, so couldn't help but score a goal on one of the most stunning and dramatically located pitches I've ever seen. To finish off our final day, we really wanted to see the famous Drangonier Sea Stacks up close, so we booked a speedboat tour with Air to Sea. We were so lucky with bright blue skies and got to go past multiple fossil falls again, getting to enjoy it from a brand new vantage point. We were also super lucky to get to see the cute puffins here, but the star of the show was still definitely the dramatic Drangonier Sea Stacks, which were absolutely spectacular. This tour was a great way to finish our trip and we highly recommend it. The dramatic landscapes of steep cliffs, green valleys and vibrant villages of the Faroe Islands legitimately took our breath away. Our five days here was such a special experience. The Faroe is truly a hidden gem and is a destination that we highly recommend visiting before it is discovered by the rest of the world. Thank you for watching our video. We have plenty more adventures, so if you'd like to follow along, please be sure to hit that subscribe button.